because this is really a totally different view of the city than you're ever going to see. After an absolutely incredible month in the beautiful country of Cambodia, it was time for me to get on a bus and head to my next destination of Vietnam, where my adventures begin spending a few days discovering the extraordinary city of Saigon. First thing about the city is it is super busy and so much traffic. I brought myself for a walk and I'm having a little bit of a late lunch, but I got some beef stir-fried vermicelli. Here is my first sit-down meal. I got the vermicelli, it looks more like glass noodles, but it said vermicelli, and then the beef, and there's some vegetables in there. Over here is some chilies, and I don't know, something with bean, and something else. I put a little bit of both of those on, I'm not totally sure what they are. Put a little bit of this on, and yeah, I'm just gonna dig in. These are definitely the most interesting vermicelli noodles I've ever seen, because they're great, but let's try it. Mm. That is so good. The flavor is so good. I love it. I don't know, will you be my friend? I don't know, is this the end? Can you tell me what to say? I feel like you lost in time. I think the only way for me to get a good feel for a city is to get a good view of the city. So I'm about to head up to the Saigon Sky Deck and really get a good view of the skyline here. The Batexco Financial Tower, where the Saigon Deck is located, comes in at number 5 of the top 20 iconic buildings of the world. It's definitely worth coming up here if you really want a good view of the city. Absolutely. It is amazing. I have a whole new appreciation for it now. And it cost only 240,000 dong for your ticket up here. And yeah, it's really incredible. Right now where I am, it feels incredibly calm and peaceful in comparison to the other areas where there's tons of traffic and it's so busy. This is, yeah, really nice. I'm really enjoying just walking around. That's what I love to do when I get to a new city is explore it by foot. And yeah, just enjoy, enjoy the stroll. Okay, there's a ton of pigeons here. So many pigeons. This is also the area where you're gonna find all your luxury brands, Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Rolex, all of that good stuff. I decided to do a one hour tour on the hop on, hop off bus, but I didn't get the hop on, hop off, hop off ticket. It's just a one hour tour to show some of the best sites of the city. Sometimes that's easier to cover a lot more area than me walking around all day because the day's flying by. But anyway, I was starving. I did not eat today and it is like four in the afternoon. So I went to Circle K. It was weird going to Circle K and not 7-Eleven because in Thailand and Cambodia, it's like all 7-Elevens. But I got a iced Americano. I got the spicy tuna onigiri and a salted quail egg steam bun. Not sure how they're gonna taste, but I'm starving. I'll take anything just to get me through my little tour so I don't feel like I'm gonna pass out. First up, I'm gonna try a bite of my steam bun, salted egg, quail steam bun. <laughs> so far it's just bun. <laughs> the bun is nice. I love steam buns. So I'm thinking the egg is inside that little ball of meat. Mm. 
After I got some sustenance in my body and I felt like I got my mental clarity back, I put on my headset so that I could listen to the recording of the tour so that I could get to know the sights and the history of the city and really just take it all in. The bus tour was good. I feel like I kind of zoned out there for a bit. But yeah, it was good. This coffee is incredibly strong. This is an Americano. I got one yesterday at a different cafe. And when I took a sip, I was like, holy cow, that's strong. But no one stopped to talk to me. Yeah, this is so strong. I went to a different coffee shop yesterday to a cafe, got an Americano, couldn't drink it, it was so strong. I thought it was just like a mistake. Got another one today, can't drink it. It's so strong, so maybe it's just normal. And this is how Americanos are here. But I'm still slowly getting it down. This is the Benthan Market. It's one of the earliest surviving structures in the city and also a very important landmark in the city. You can get a little bit of everything and more in here. It also welcomes over 10,000 visitors a day. I had to come and enjoy the sunset here at the Caravel Hotel. This is one of the most historical hotels in all of Ho Chi Minh. It opened in 1959 and I am at the rooftop bar called Saigon Saigon and this is a very historical bar. This existed before rooftop bars were even a thing here and during the war all the politicians, soldiers and journalists would come here for a sneaky happy hour drink. This was the place to be. Normally a cocktail here costs 320,000 dong but a happy hour it is 50% off of this whole list. I do love a good happy hour and this passion fruit cocktail was incredible. So were the complimentary peanuts that they give you with your drink. But the view was spectacular, the sunset so beautiful. It was the perfect way to finish my day of exploring. I've been walking around in District 4 of the city and it's very local, lots of very small streets, lots of little shops and local food places. It's getting really hot, so I had to stop. One thing I did get on my way, which I haven't drank yet, is this centella juice. I had to actually Google what centella is. For me, I just love green juice, so it was green, look healthy. I'm like, I'm gonna get one. It's also commonly known as go-to cola, which I have heard of before. So it's an Ayurvedic medicine, and it has lots of good medicinal health benefits. So I'm excited to drink that later, but I was starving and I could not decide where to eat today. So I just found this local place because it was nice and quiet. One thing I've learned since being here is that snails are a very popular dish. I've been shocked because every time I go to a restaurant, there's tons of snails on the menu and I've now learned there are way more species of snails than I could have ever imagined. I had no idea there were so many different varieties, but I'm playing it a little safe today. And today I just got some crab claws and I'm excited just to dig in and have a little snack. That is my crab claws and they look good. I got my cracker. Yeah, it's in garlic butter. I'm so excited. I am totally amazed at the driving skills here because how they drive through these very narrow streets with tons of other vehicles and bikes is beyond me. I don't think I could do it. I wanted to relax and unwind a little bit after being in those busy streets. So I came to Tao Dan Park and it is so peaceful and serene in here. It's super green. There's play areas for the children and there's sprinklers and it almost feels like I'm not in the city now. So it's a great place just to come and walk around. There's people exercising and running. It just feels really tranquil. I feel like I needed to just sit for a few minutes and it's the perfect place for me to try this green drink that I got since I haven't tried it yet. This has the centella juice. It has mung bean milk, which I've never heard of before, but yeah, mung bean milk, coconut milk, some boba, water chestnut jelly, and chia seeds. I told them to put very, very minimal sugar. I said no sugar and he's like, well, you should get a little bit. So I said very minimal. So let's try it. Mmm. Oh, that's nice. It tastes milky and green. Wow. And healthy. <laughs> And he really did go minimal sugar, which I love, but he was right. It probably definitely needed a tiny bit of sugar because if I didn't have any sweetener in here, it would taste super green. Mm, I love boba and jelly. That is divine. Okay, this is one of my favorite things I've had in Vietnam so far. Mm, so good. I honestly love seeing people use the outdoor gyms here. We do have them back home, but I feel like I never see people using them. And since being in Southeast Asia, there's always people using the outdoor gyms. 
this is definitely a great place to stop if you just want to escape it all and escape that hustle and bustle of the city and just, you know, ground in a little bit of nature, nature in the city. So if I'm not using two feet in a heartbeat to get around the city, I'm actually using Grab because it is super convenient and it's kind of like, yeah, the Uber. I am now at a place called Landmark 81. It is the tallest building in Vietnam. You can definitely see it sitting amongst the skyline. It just looks incredible. But right now I'm walking in it and it's a shopping mall. It has all the stores your little heart could desire from luxury brands to more regular brands. Yeah, it's pretty beautiful in here. There's Adidas and over there you're gonna find Levi's. Lots of little restaurants to choose from. I never thought I'd be seeing one of these in Southeast Asia or in Vietnam, but there is a skating rink here in Landmark 81. I'm on the bottom level and yeah, there's a skating rink. So if you want to go skating, you can come here and do that. Also, a few levels up when I was checking it out, there's also a gym up there. So this place has a little bit of everything. There is a sky deck you can go and it's supposed to have a really incredible view of the city. Um, yeah, this is pretty incredible. We're just getting to the 79th floor because I'm going up to the sky deck and you guys, my ears have been popping the whole way and I almost felt like a little woozy in my head. Um, but yeah, I'm here. This is incredible, you guys. Check this out. Wow, we're so high up. But they even have some little virtual games up here. But I'm like, I'm in awe of this. That Saigon Sky Deck I went to yesterday was amazing, but this is next level. Literally next level because it's even higher. So it's some more levels up. <laughs> But this view is insane. <laughs> Getting geared up to go up to the skywalk. <laughs> yeah? Sorry. Oh, okay. Yep. Let go. Let go? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Come on. If you want to come up here to the open viewing point, you have to wear a harness. So I'm harnessed in. And check this out, you guys. This is unreal. Look at, at least the floor is not that far down. Whoa, crazy. This is amazing. The building is surrounded by all of these condos and you can see the condos are definitely lifestyle living because they have tennis courts, there's pools between them. They're right on the river. Plus they have Landmark 81 right here. So you're shopping and there's the gym in here, the skating rink, you got everything here. This is incredible, plus best view of the city. Miwaku restaurant right there on the 80th floor is known to be one of the most romantic restaurants and terraces in the city and you can see why. There's two restaurants here. There is the one that you've seen uh, one floor up where it has the outdoor terrace. And then there's this one right here, which is one level down from the one with the outdoor terrace. And it's absolutely stunning. You have this beautiful view of the city. I love the music and yes, I got a glass of vino because how can you not enjoy at least one beverage while you're here in this beautiful setting. I definitely love the open kitchen concept. You can never go wrong with that. I'm super happy I'm not enjoying this experience alone because I feel like an experience like this one is meant to be shared. So my friend Lorenzo from Romania came to meet me today to come and enjoy the spectacular view and do a little bit of adventuring around the city with me. I actually met him here in Ho Chi Minh, so hi! Hello, right here. <laughs> so yes, experiences like this are always better shared. A trip to a main city in Southeast Asia would not be complete if you didn't go walk down one of their nightly party streets, there is always so much going on, so many lights. It's like a totally different world. You turn a corner and suddenly you're in this flashy party world. Now we are in an area called Japanese Corner. So it's kind of like Chinatown, but it's Japanese town. And yeah, it's really cool and colorful. It's almost giving me a taste of Japan before I get to visit there. There we go, 
little taste of Japan in a glass. We got our Sapporo beer. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> mm. That was nice and refreshing. One thing I learned very quickly as we're walking through these streets, yes, it is also kind of like a red light district. So a lot of streets you can't take photos or videos on. So the camera had to be put away. Well, I didn't know that about this area, yeah. Surprised? Yeah, I'm surprised. But yeah. it's really interesting because yeah. we didn't expect this and it yeah. makes it even more interesting. It's so true, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like a surprise. So yeah, definitely very interesting area. But it's nice to be, you know, experiencing a little bit of Japanese Japan. culture. Yeah. 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 Like neither of us have been there yet, so right, right. This right. is like our <laughs> dipping our toes into Japan right now. Exactly. It's a bit of a spoiler. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Spoiler alert. <laughs> There's a Japanese bakery right there. Love it. Decided to have dinner here because they do have like a set menu, so you get a beer and you get your meal and it's about 280,000 dong. So the first portion of this meal is miso soup. And this is the first time in my life that I've had brown miso soup. I'm used to clear miso soup with chunks of tofu. Um, this looks really interesting. And then we got some kimchi. I'm excited to try it. First bite of the brown miso soup. Are you gonna try yours? Oh, you're gonna help me, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't get it on my lap. Oh, hey, thank you. Mmm. Tastes different. It definitely tastes like thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he actually he saved me from dripping my soup on my lap, which definitely would have happened had he not put his hand there. So yeah. thank you. Got your back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's got my back. Yeah, it tastes like I'm used to that clear miso, which is definitely more watery. This has a little bit of a thicker consistency, but it still has that miso flavor. Um, it's really quite nice. I don't see any chunks of tofu. I'm not sure there's chunks of something, but what do you think of yours? Wow. I don't know even what to, how to, I mean. Describe it. Describe it, yeah. 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 It's different, isn't it? So different. <laughs> yeah, like it's definitely not like a traditional yeah. miso. Yeah, definitely. And maybe wow. this, and say it's not like a traditional miso, maybe this is traditional in Japan. I don't know, I haven't been there yet. Maybe what we think in Canada, having that clear miso or even Romania, isn't traditional, so I don't know. What is traditional miso now? Maybe this is it. <laughs> yeah, maybe this is the one. Next up on this little set menu, we got noodles with beef and, I don't know, some green stuff. It looks good, I'm excited to try it. And the last and final piece, the gyoza. Check that out. Going in. That is so good. It's like super flavorful. Love the kimchi, a little spicy. Very good. That dinner was actually exceptionally good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. The flavors were on point. What do you think? Well, I totally agree. <laughs> it was good? Yeah, yeah. I haven't tried um, Japanese food before, or maybe if I did, I mean, this one was like out of this uh, world. Yeah. It was really good. Yeah. yeah. And neither of us expected much. We just were hungry, and it ended up being really, really good. So, yeah. highly recommend. Definitely. Thumbs up. So, it's safe to say I'm actually pleasantly surprised with this city. I've absolutely loved it. And now, in less than two hours, I'm about to get on a bus and head to my next destination. So that whole getting to the bus thing was so much harder than I expected. The times were just different than what my ticket said and I kept, you know, getting told to go here and there and wait and wait and wait. And then when I finally got the shuttle to get to the bus station, it was super busy, people everywhere, buses everywhere. I didn't say on my ticket what bus to go to and then I was standing outside the bus and it was loading but it's already past the time of my ticket. And anyway, I was, standing there thinking like I was trying to ask for help and no one was helping me and I was standing there thinking nobody's helping me and then just as I thought that this amazing couple came up and started helping me and they even walked me to where I have to find the person that's going to tell me what bus to get on and it was amazing and yeah here I am